Welcome Grade 12 to our last installment in the Advanced Measuring Series. In this lesson, we'll be investigating the surface area, volume and temperature settings on an electrical geyser. These calculations will help contractors calculate the cost of installing the geysers into a complex. An electrical geyser is a sizable container which heats water using an electrical element, much like the element in a kettle. Unlike a kettle, a geyser has a thermostat that switches on the element on and off. This is to control the temperature and power consumption. The geyser the contractors have chosen to install is a closed cylinder. These geysers can use a lot of electricity. There are two ways to make them more energy efficient. One way is to turn down the thermostat so that the water is not heated as much. Another way is to wrap the geyser in insulation material. This is sometimes called a geyser blanket. The contractors want to calculate how much insulation material they will need for one geyser. Here is the net of the hot water cylinder. This is used as a pattern for the insulation blanket. We need to determine the measurements in meters squared of the surface area of the cylinder. The net gives you only the measurement for the diameter and not the radius, but that is fine. We know that the radius is half of the diameter. Radius equals half of the diameter. 96 centimeters divided by 2 gives 48 centimeters. The insulation is sold in square meters. So before we calculate the surface area we need to buy, we must change our measurements from centimeters to meters. Remember that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. The radius equals 48 divided by 100, which is 0,48 meters. The height, 140 centimeters divided by 100, which is 1,4 meters. Now let us calculate the total surface area of the insulation blanket. We'll use 3,142 as our value for pi and round our answer to the nearest meter. We'll use the total surface area formula for a cylinder. The radius equals 0,48 meters and the height equals 1,4 meters. Therefore, the total surface area is equal to 2 times 3,142 times 0,48 squared plus 2 times 3,142 times 0,48 times 1,4. If we use our calculator, we get an answer of 5,670 meters squared. This rounds up to 6 meters squared. The company who is making this geyser blanket recommends that the contractors buy 25% more material than the actual size. We calculated the total surface area to be 6 meters squared. We need to find out what is 25% extra of that amount. 25% can be written as a fraction, 25 over 100, which means 25 divided by 100, which is equal to 0, 0,25. Finding 25% means multiplying 0,25 by the total surface area, which is 6 meters squared, giving an answer of 1,5 meters squared. If we add 6 meters squared to 1,5 meters squared, we get an answer of 7,5 meters squared. Now that we know how to keep the geyser insulated so that the water stays hotter for longer, we need to investigate how much water the geyser can hold. Using the measurements of the cylinder, let's calculate the volume of water in the geyser when it's full. Remember, when calculating the volume of a three-dimensional object, we first find the area of the base and then multiply it by the height. The base shape of a cylinder is a circle. Volume is equal to pi multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by the height. The radius is 48 centimeters and the height is 140 centimeters. We substitute these values in and get 3,142 times 48 squared times 140. We put these values into our calculator and get 1,013,483,52 centimeters cubed. Now let's change this measurement into liters. Remember that one cubic centimeter is equal to 0 0,001 liters. We times our volume by 0, 0,001 and get roughly 1,013 and a half liters. We round this down to 1,013 liters. Now that the contractors know more about the electrical geyser they'll be installing in every house, they have one last query. The box packaging states that the geyser's optimum temperature is 100,4 degrees Fahrenheit. 
the contractors want to know what the optimum temperature is in degrees centigrade. Here are the two formulas used for converting Fahrenheit to centigrade and centigrade to Fahrenheit. We will use the second formula. We substitute 100,4 in 4F and use our calculator and get the answer as 38 degrees centigrade. Thank you for joining us Grade 12s. Remember to do the questions found in the Advanced Measuring Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about advanced measuring on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.